So, and this is Observations with Otsu. I'm actually going to do kind of a hybrid video today. I was just recording earlier um, for my Apex Academy. I can briefly mention that, but we are in week 11 of week 12. It's a 12 week course. <coughs> um, and course is probably not the right word. It's, it's, it's like an actual a academy, like master class. We've gone through quite a bit. Um, and I can, you know, I, I've, I have a tweet out there. I can link it in the, in the description. On the comprehensive stuff that we've discussed, it, it mainly revolves around three different things. It revolves around A-Rune based trading, price action trading, and momentum based trading. And I put them into uh, all together in a way that makes sense. But then I also added things like risk management, um, you know, how to improve yourself as a trader, on and on and on and on. It's, it's like 50 hours of video. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I say all that to say, one, if you are interested in that, the Academy is almost finished. And after the Academy, I will be offering those videos individually or maybe in like packages. Um, one that's gonna be basically all trading and education one that's going to be all lectures and one that's going to be like all risk management and it's 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 very <clears throat> it's very comprehensive and so i can kind of give um kind of a sample once that's finished and i can explain that in more detail in another video so that's the first thing if you guys are interested because you know the academy was a heavier price tag at about 540 dollars if you're interested in maybe parts of that like out of the whole list, you may have seen what I have offered. If you're interested in a piece of it, um, I will offer those in pieces after the Academy is over, which will be the end of next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, cause I can, cause you know, it's cause I've had a lot of people ask me like, well, can't I just subscribe or pay for this part only? And I'm like, well, no, it comes in a complete package. And mainly that's not a pricing issue necessarily. It's mainly just because this was the first time I launched the Academy and I wanted everything to go smoothly. And that was just the best way to do that. And so now that things have gone to completion just about, I can offer that. Um, and the second reason I bring that up is because on Mondays, which is today, usually about 12 hours after weekly open, <clears throat> I discuss um, price action from a weekly perspective through the apex in educational system that I offer and it's, it's just education um, and, but I offer strict reviews based off of the information that people learn and as that might sound very similar because that's exactly how observations with Otsu is lined up it's pretty much the exact same except for I'm a little more um, broad scope analysis on observations videos and then for the apex videos I get really dive deep and again like ob observations videos are anywhere between you know 25 to 55 minutes where apex reviews are like an hour and then that's they get five hours of video per week right and so that's a lot to digest for some people so you get a lot more video content a lot more analysis and sometimes i ramble and sometimes that rambling is a good thing right but um <clears throat> anyway i say all that to i say all of that to say that I had to cut that video short today because of time, but also because of how the markets were reacting. And so I'm going to do uh, ob the observations video. Um, so, so what I covered for the Apex review is I covered the total market cap, I covered some Bitcoin analysis, and I covered some Ethereum and uh, also Binance. I was going to cover more of them, like Solana, Dogecoin, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm gonna go ahead and cover through an observations video, the total market cap, Bitcoin, Ethereum again. And then we're gonna go into the Solana, Dogecoin and all that. So you guys are gonna be more of a two in one combo today. Like you're gonna have half of this observations video is actually gonna also be an Apex video. And so this will be just a regular YouTube video uh, nothing really special about the the distribution of that and so i think that's um i think that's sufficient and kind of kind of consolidate these two it's been a, it's been a few weeks since i've done observations videos so i kind of wanted to do that as well so that's the introduction to that um i'm gonna go ahead and get started and so first things first i'm just going to go up to i'm going to do two things actually i'm going to go to the total market cap and we always cover the weekly right um 
there's a few different things I would kind of stretch out. So this, maybe I'll add this as like a new section. We've had, we got two things going on and I want to address this from, from a standpoint of what they actually are and then also give an overview. The two things we got going on is that we've had a lot of FUD lately about Binance, specifically their stablecoin BUSD and how that relates to Paxos and how they're trying to uh, incorporate all that. And long story short, <clears throat> um, and again, earlier I recorded I recorded this and I explained this to um, my paid members and I got more information now and the information is basically like circle narked on Binance, not even narc, just like um, just tried to whistle blow some things that they may or may, may, or may not be true on, but it, it sounds like there is a targeting against stable coins. Um, and it, it's more complicated than that, but basically that caused a large drop down today. Um, and we, you know, my, my process was that um, at the time we would see a bounce. And so you may have seen a tweet for me about uh, Binance on the 30, on the 30 marker, 30 minute mark that we were going to go up and we've been up ever since. So um, that's when I started to do the video and we've been up ever since. So that's good. We're about halfway to my target already. So I think that's uh, really clean. Uh, that being said, you know, that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is we have the CPI and I've mentioned, I mentioned in also on Twitter that the CPI is going to be calculated differently. It used to go by a two week structure or two year structure rather, sorry. And now it's going on a one week or one <laughs> one year structure. Um, hopefully it doesn't go to one week. Um, and long story short, that's uh, kind of neutral. It's good and bad. It's bad because um, historically we've done that for two years, and th this is this is historic in terms of how we're going to analyze course uh, consumer price indexes. And I think that's the reason that's long story short bad is because it's going to hide inconsistencies in the market more. Um, it's not going to compare things to it was previously and I think it's going to allow for more fluctuation where there shouldn't be now That's the bad news, but I think also it's going to be um, Bullish news in some sense because it, since it's going to hide it. It's going to be perceived as less bearish And so overall, I think it's going to be neutral now that being said, I'm not a financial expert I'm not even an advisor really so I'm not I'm not really sure how that works in detail but I do know that based off of my intuition, it sounds more of like a neutral thing. I think there's some bad, some good, and I think it's just gonna work itself out. It's gonna be priced in. And honestly, that goes into my final thing with the news aspect is that these things get priced in anyway, honestly. I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, all the CPIs, all the FOMC meetings, all these things have been priced in for months now, at least a minimum of two, three months. I would argue six, to eight months um, and honestly most of the things that you could attribute to CPI FOMC in a negative way could actually be contributed better towards pure price action that we have seen and that you could have seen and basically I'm not trying to call out people by any of that I'm not I really not but I look at this chart and I made a I made a um, I made a tweet a long time you know about a month ago Based off, I, I, I basically pointed on the on the chart where all the FOMC meetings are, and there's not really a correlation in terms of what the price will do beyond like a four hour period, like one four hour candle, I should say, maybe maybe eight hours at the most. But overall, like we were in a big downtrend, right? We had the big bearish divergence. Uh, we even had a larger one on the three week that people have argued with me about, and um, I would say that they're wrong because it worked out. We also had a divergence on the two weeks um, and then with the liquidity and I've mentioned I've mentioned very very much so that whenever we get a divergence with liquidity it ends up being pretty much spot on so we had a divergence here this was actually on the three week I believe um, no it was two week I'm sorry two week so we have the divergence here and then we have a divergence here simple as that guys I, I really and girls I think it's simple as that um, and we've been up ever since I had buys at 16.5. Um, if you pay attention to my videos, I talk about that every time. So whatever it is what it is. But as far as all of that goes, I say that to say, I 
think most of you are probably paying too much attention to news and not enough attention to the charts. You're trying to find a reason for why you are wrong or why the market is wrong or why something is going other than the way that you want it to go. Okay, and I'm not saying that to anybody's default, right? I'm not saying that to anybody's detriment, I should say. I'm saying that because if you focus on pure price action, I think it's gonna give you a cleaner perspective. And that's certainly been the case for me. The more that I focus more the more that I have focused on the charts and less on news, the more I start to get a rounded off sense of what the market should be doing and is doing. And so the last thing I need is, well, what about this? What about the news? Well, this this influencer said this, this person said this, Gary Gensler saying this, Jim Cramer saying this, all these other people are saying all these other things. And it convolutes everything. Okay, when you trade, I firmly think that you should just, one, get up in the morning. Whatever, whatever time zone you're in, whether it's daily close or not, get up in the morning, get you a cup of coffee, whatever, and just look on the charts. Like, put on some noise-canceling headphones. I've got some on right now. You focus on the charts and be silent. And just see what the charts are telling you. It's as simple as that, right? Get in the zone, focus on that, get a clean aspect and because noise those those things contribute to noise so anyway i digress from that but that's what we got going on today and it did i say that because it all caused a little bit of fud today um but we've we've bounced up a little bit since then and we'll get into that so all right so that's the first thing now i'm going to get into the total market cap i'm also going to add the bitcoin dominance as well all right so let's go ahead and go to the total market cap <clears throat> And we'll kind of cover this uh, quickly on the weekly um, and just see how it goes. So go ahead and go to the weekly chart. All right, had the big <clears throat> had a big rundown last week. It was pretty significant. Went inside this bar here. And I mentioned this earlier today that we're kind of in this zone right here. We're in between the top of this and the bottom of this here. So that's kind of what I see. You also kind of have a mid it's almost kind of pre-built for you right not quite the mid but pretty close so this is kind of the area of price action that i'm looking at um earlier today we had a big down move and i mentioned today to my apex members like hey this has been routine for the last you know four weeks five weeks or so and you can tell by because of these wicks you had one here that means price action went down to that level same here went down Excuse me in the last four weeks had went down to those levels that's why the wicks exist right so um <clears throat> so this so far is nothing inconsistent of that like typically mondays have been pretty bearish uh mondays for the for the most part and you know we used to call them bloody mondays and so i think we're kind of getting into that zone that's a healthy thing in my opinion i think um these bloody mondays are a good way to assess the rest of the week we had a big down move and then it mainly wicked up and we know that because this is the only candle that we've had like this only represents one day we got six days left and we still have an hour actually to spare so um and as you can see the markets reflect this you know uh Binance was down uh to 10 per minus 10 percent i think bitcoin was down to like two and a half maybe i can't remember offhand but a lot of these were down like a lot like i'm personally in a phantom right now and Phantom is up four and a half percent when it was actually down like three percent today. I think it was actually down worse. Um, let me say here, <clears throat> and I'm in this position here. Uh, yeah, it was down six and a half percent, and now it's up four and a half. So it fluctuated uh, so far ten percent, right? And that's it's a big deal. I think that's worth thinking that. Hey, I think overall the low could be in for the week, honestly. And if we look back on the total that does seem to be the case so we excuse me um so we go to the weekly again we got all these wicks and they tend to happen earlier in the week mondays and tuesdays right so there's a chance that the weekly could be in especially that we have cpi tomorrow and again i don't really focus on the cpi i don't really care about the cpi i think it's i think the projection is going to be basically what they're expecting and it's like i don't really I don't care. I, I'm, I'll be just, I'll just be honest. Like I don't really care too much about CPI. It, it hasn't. It's never. You know, no OG ever talked about this. 
um, when I started in 2017. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is all like a bunch of late uh, pseudo correlation events that have happened because of the pandemic, not because that we are um, a correlated asset, so to speak. I'm not saying that we are or that we are not correlated because I know there's lots of strong viewpoints on both sides. But what I am saying is prior to prior to the COVID crash, nobody cared about FOMC meetings. Literally nobody cared. Nobody cared about CPIs. Nobody cared about any of those things. And now you got a lot of hybrid traders or not even hybrid. You got stock traders that are in crypto bringing their stock stuff with them. And it doesn't transfer, right? Okay. And I mean, yeah, some of that's going to transfer, of course. But overall, it's going to be a net negative versus the people that have been here in the crypto space and understand this stuff. And I'm not saying like, I'm not saying I know what I'm doing necessarily, right? Like I'm not gonna sit here and wag my own tail, but I'm just saying like, I started in late 2017. You know, I started my Twitter account to December 2017. I, I started crypto maybe two months before then, or maybe 30 days before then roughly. And I went through the entire bear market. Nobody ever said anything about CPI, FMC, anything. And so the thing is, is that when you focus on all of this, you're looking at Bitcoin to look at the S&P 500, to look at the meetings. Like that's the thing. I don't look at S&P 500. I really don't. I don't. I look at it on the two week chart and I look at it maybe like twice a month and I don't use it for any analysis for crypto. And I, and I, I think using it directly for crypto is a mistake. Most of, most of the profit traders I know don't use it. And now that being said, a lot of really, 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 really good traders I know do use it. So I'm not saying you can't use it. I'm just saying, I think for the average person, you need to focus on the chart that you are trying to get into play with. So I digress, but that's, uh, that's, that's just the mean average of what I see. Um, so we're going to move on to the daily here. <clears throat> uh, and right, right here, I, you know this this will look better on the bitcoin chart but we had um had a touchdown in here if you want to look and focus on the mid that was basically uh it was tapping into the mid i think this would be more accurate yeah so tapping into the mid there and we got kind of a recovery but we still got a bearish one we're still putting a low so that's um part of something that i think we need to consider Overall, got the don't have any bullish consolidation yet. We still got a full trend bearish uh, price action going on, so we need to see this reaction. Overall, I think this is solid. For um, I, I've been saying this in the academy for quite some time, and unfortunately, this is going to take two or three months to figure out. But I think we are in a reaccumulation period, and I think that will take us till late March. I do, and so that's why I haven't personally been trading this. I haven't posted many charts about this because we're stuck in a we're just stuck in a really big range, high time frame range. And that's the most boring price action to take care of. You know, it's better, you know, people made money off this and now they're getting chopped up in this. This is distributive. This is, you know, this is impulsive. This is distributive. So you make moves on impulses, you lose money on distributions. So that's where I'm at. Like I, I made, I, I, uh, I bought right around this range. I bought twice. I bought one here, once around this range, once around here on the Bitcoin chart. And so I'm not too concerned. Um, you know, we've, I've lost a little bit of money, but I'm holding for two years. So I'm not, I'm not really looking into that too much. So we have the triple sell divergences um, on the liquidity, even liquidity. And usually when we get the sell signals combined with the divergence, we get a sharp drawdown, which is exactly what we got. So works out pretty well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to... Bitcoin dominance chart because I think this is also important. Um, so as you can see, we've we've had some ever since December really. Um, basically, the beginning of December, we've had a, we've had about a ten percent um, increase in dominance, and I think that's something that we need to consider overall. Is that Bitcoin hasn't really moved good? Well, it had the run up, of course, right? But other than that, it hasn't really moved much more volatile in comparison to other coins. And I, I think a lot of people misunderstand, underestimate that, how much easier it is to actually hold and trade Bitcoin versus other assets. And so a lot of you guys are trying to chase these altcoins that are going up 100, 200, 300%, and that's good. I, I, I think that's good to try to look over the most money that you can. Um, 
but at the same time, I think that, sorry, over time it might be more beneficial for you to focus on just Bitcoin because yeah, you might make 50% on a, on a one week run for an altcoin, but you might lose that 50% over the next two weeks after that. And now over a one, three month or three week, one month period, you're break even or you would have made 10, Five percent, and well, Bitcoin went ten percent at the same time frame. So, I say all that to say, look at your don't look look at your USD value when you try to trade, of course, but also look at your Bitcoin value because you'll be surprised how much more money you probably how much more time you could have saved by just holding Bitcoin and trading it. Honestly, so um, just keeping that in mind. So that's I want to I wanted to mention that because the dominance is rising, and I think that's worth considering. Um, because historically, once once it the dominance runs off the lows, we get the end of the bear market, which is exactly what we got here in 2018, 2019. And this is kind of what we're starting to get right here, right? Um, it's a little tricky to kind of dissect this overall because the behavior is much more different. But this is very Adam and Eve structure-like. And so this is that's one reason I got the bar here. And I'm, I'm looking for an Eve structure right here. And if that's the case, I think the next two years, maybe to the middle of 2024, I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting market. I would watch for the dominance to increase significantly over the next 12 to 18 months. All right, so we're gonna go on to Bitcoin now. <clears throat> go, and go ahead and go to the weekly chart as usual. And I've kind of marked this out uh, for now, but Again, we have the big old impulse down for the weekly. We still kind of rested along the top. Um, I think semantic wise, I think this technically is broken. We did go down below it, but I think it's really too close to tell. And that's one of the things I'm not, I'm not a purist as far as like, well, it, it, it barely broke by $3. I think that it should be counted as broken. Well, I, I think that just, I think that just depends. I think generally that's that's a good rule of thumb, but overall, I think when there's two things are too close to call, I think you should look at different exchanges because they measure that differently, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so that's that's what's happened so far. Um, currently, again, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, earlier today, it went all the way down to down to the lows right here, and then went ahead and bounced up. So that's where I want to keep in mind. From the, from the total market cap is that these wicks tend to be wicks for a reason. We get a lot of down moves off, off, off hand, and then they go ahead and bounce back up for various reasons. The fact that we, I mean, yeah, we are, we're five, about seven minutes away from the daily close, so we're gonna, we're gonna be an, analyzing this into the close. But the fact that we are up, like some of these are up positively, like Maker's up 12%, probably because of the Paxos thing. Um, I mean, Ave is up. Like you can see, like these are up because they're reacting positively in the form of de decentralization. Um, the market's reacting positively towards negative news because there's people that are bullish on crypto in this regard. People are bullish on DeFi, you know, and Bitcoin is part of that, right? And so, Phantom is part of that. Dogecoin is it, it, Dogecoin is just Dogecoin, right? Um, SNX, DeFi protocol, Ave, DeFi, DeFi protocol. Baker, uh, same vein, right? This is this is a short coin, so that doesn't count. Um, so you got all those things playing into it, right? And so that's kind of something that I want people to see, <clears throat> um, and also why you shouldn't just be, you should not generally ever, generally speaking, you should not sell when you are panicking. Okay, now Black Swan event, completely different story, um, but if you are panicking it's probably a bad idea to sell because that's what the market wants you to do. The market is designed to get you out of positions on the short term. And so that's one reason I focus so much on buying this. In fact, I think I did buy on this candle or at the top of this candle, um, about 16.4. So I think I bought somewhere after the, it closed. But that's why I'm not too concerned because I bought down on this low. Some people bought like maybe maybe bought this candle or maybe bought top of here and some people bought here and then some people may have bought here even and so when that happens if, if people already buy at the top then they're going to try to sell that early because they're panicking it's going down like i told you it's going down blah 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 and there's so many theories right but the overall 
the supplies just aren't strong enough to compensate for all the late longer so to speak so <clears throat> again i don't i'm not making fun of any, not i'm not making fun of anybody i'm just saying that's just how it works and that's why i tend to focus on things a little earlier so um daily we got that impulse down that's wicked above i mentioned that in the video that we we might see a bounce and we sure did uh, based off of the sell signal that was this was a false signal which usually means we retest that we re, we did retest it i did say that we'd go to um 21.3 and we did so um i'll probably have to update my tweet about that so um another thing uh just kind of clean this up a second is the 200 ema so i'm going to kind of adjust this to 200 and what do you know we actually uh closed right above it and so that's i think that's a good measurement i think if we go to the brave chart um it's a little bit so okay so i think it's probably more referential to focus on um <clears throat> the coinbase one so we're at the 200 EMA, and I mentioned it on Twitter as well. I think if if you are, I'm a big 200 EMA fan for something like this. I think this is the good time to historically buy a dip because if it fails, then I can close my longs, right? And so um, you can kind of see that we touched here, went down. We kind of touched here, went back up, touched here, went back up. And so it kind of mimics the 200 a little bit. Um, we'll see how that plays out. But overall, I'm a little optimistic in this regard. So um, we did have the down move. I mentioned if you are wanting to long, I, th I think first of all, this is a better long position than it is short, obviously. And I mentioned longing when it was right here at the time, but we've already bounced up. So if we if we take this target, I think it would be um, okay to target this as the low here at this previous structure as a stop loss. And then go ahead and focus on you know the sky is the limit as far as what you want your targets i'd probably target the next block up here 28 the problem is this may not necessarily take uh you know if you're swing trading this it might take longer than you think um so i just want to keep that in mind if you're looking for a short peer a short position i would personally just wait until this closes back below the box i'll probably even wait till all this closes so you could you could target somewhere in between past the order block and then target the highs right here and then maybe target to 17.6 the only problem is i don't know if it's going to go down that that low um it's it's complicated as far as is it protected or not technically it's not but we also had this here we also had a lot of low uh volume uh protection in this range so that's really hard to uh, break that, right? Once we've already broken it. We've had a lot of, we've had more buyers than you think. I basically, that's what I'm saying. And so I don't want people to necessarily um, get into like tr being trigger happy on shorts because this, although this does look good reward wise, it may not be a, a good option for some people. So, um, so that's, those are the kind of the two scenarios that I see with that. So that being said, we're gonna to go to Ethereum. All right, so onto Ethereum, and we've officially uh, went through the daily close, so we'll kind of assess this as we go. Um, Ethereum on the weekly chart. Again, we have the same down move. Now this represents one full candle, and we again, we had we went down below, and we kind of went back above so far. We're still below this range, right? So this was a previous range from the daily. That's why I have this marked out here. Um, on the weekly, it's a little more complex and larger so we got a kind of big zone to deal with right and it's right right in the middle so um i think the big takeaway from this that we should gather is that whatever is happening here is going to be part of a larger move so like the things on the four hour and daily and i don't want you guys to get all um confused in that regard you know so um Focus on the macro view. This is a much better time now to focus on the macro than it is on the micro. And I say that because for the entire year last year, we've been focused on like the four hour, the one hour, and we're used to like, kind of like, 
we're used to downward price action, but we're also used to more boring price action, and then it got exciting, so now we're trying to get used to exciting price action, and I don't want people to necessarily do that, right? So um, you have to change as the price action changes, and so don't get chopped up on things where we have the macro view to consider. And right now we have a big macro view with this. One thing that I've looked at for some time now is this Adam and Eve structure. And this is kind of starting to invalidate this. This needs to basically close bullish this week to have any consideration of that. But it has worked out um, so far. Um, if we kind of go to the daily, we got the daily structure here. This was a result of these two order blocks kind of mingling together. And we technically broke below that. So I think that we actually might consider so downward price action, I have these two targets mapped out. Um, this is the top of this previous range. This one's the top of this previous range. And so that's the, probably the next target I think that could happen next. If you ask me, if, if you want to short this, I'd probably just target the highs like so. And then just target this uh, right down here. Or if you want to go to full target, you could just do something like this, take profits on the way. And that's a 3.3 .3 trade. I'm not necessarily saying that you should do that. I personally am not. I would much rather focus on not even having that and then just buying in at these targets instead of instead of shorting and using them as take profits. I think that's the more um, advantageous approach um, to all of that. So um, that's what I'm personally doing. <clears throat> Again, I'm also coming from the idea that I think the markets are going to get bullish in the next 18 months for sure so i'm preparing myself for that and today's news is a good example or now now technically yesterday's news i think the past 24 hours is showing you that um, crypto doesn't necessarily care like yeah we yes we have wanted to play fair with a lot of um, regulations so to speak but it's like there's still a lot of innovation there's still a lot of you know promise so to speak on DeFi things like that and so that's what people are gravitating to, I think. And, and I think that's healthy in, in an in a economy like this. I think having those options that we can be, we can try to be pers have personal responsibility, you know. That's why I focus on DeFi. I'm a big fan of personal finance. Not necessarily a big fan. Uh, op I don't really like the idea of brokers telling me what to do. I, I even talked to a guy, a financial guy that I know um, yesterday that was talking about, uh, you know, his... He's basically paying the, his broker all these fees for not really doing much, and it is what it is, right? And so the thing is, is like I'm in charge of my own finances, and not only that, is people can't, you know, a random schmuck can't access it, right? Like, um, you know, so all that being said, I'm a bigger fan of DeFi, and I think overall, I think the markets might reflect that. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. But as far as that goes on the daily. With Ethereum, um, I do see this coming down, and I'm I am a buyer in the thirteen hundred dollar range. So, four hour um, kind of gives a little bit of a divergence here. We don't have any liquidity, so this might this might still bleed. We don't really know, but I'm looking at kind of this this as the the flip, and here's your new uh, target range. So, <clears throat> I would short below this, long above that, basically as, as easy as that. So. Um, if you're short and you're long in, so to speak. As, a, as I said, I am a buyer as opposed, I'm, I'm waiting to buy as opposed to shorting the market. So that's Ethereum. Um, and now I'm gonna kind of merge this a little bit. Like I said, the second half of this video, which will start right after this, is gonna focus on um, Solana, Dogecoin, things like that. And I'm going to talk more in reference to the Apex members, and then you guys can follow along as well. So. All right, so I'm going to go on to Solana, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on all the stuff that we use for the Academy, um, and go over Solana for a second, um, and then we're going to go to Dogecoin as well, and maybe cover a few um, AI coins. So <clears throat> uh, for the weekly chart, we had, again, a down move, went below it went below in the structure. We have kind of like, I call it a TP formation, it's just more like a, like a it's like a not really blow off because it didn't really blow off but just kind of a, a ramp up and then went back down not really too conclusive on the weekly in that regard 
we had the bullish uh, consolidation leading to a bullish wedge and as you can see so far this is doing pretty much jack so this is a sign that the bullish price action for solana is not really there in comparison to other coins that may or may not be i think solana is starting to see the effects of of, of a fade of a result of this of these of the past you know for bullish candles and also a sign that maybe it bounced just because the market did not necessarily because it should have so this is my line in the sand for the weekly um very massive um uh, breaker retest and so i if that's the case i'm a big buyer around the 14 60 range 15 dollar range so to speak <clears throat> um, and that's kind of what i'm looking at for the weekly other than that there's not really much to say here on the weekly uh, RSI didn't even re reclaim the 50 in that regard, um, but that's just what I see on uh, the one week time frame. On the daily time frame, we just got a sell signal on here on the apex, so that's something that I am personally looking at. Um, if we kind of go, just kind of analyze this for now, and we see this, we target from the top, very, uh, not quite, not super tight of a stop, but tighter than I would prefer. Um, and this is your target range. So I would see a very nice uh, 7R solution here. So we'll see how that pans out. It's still too early to tell. It is a daily time frame, so you also got funding fees to be concerned about. But this is kind of what I see. I think that works really well because um, this is more of a retest of this distribution area. So I think we could get an impulse uh, to the downside. Um, other than that, for long targets, I don't really see too much of of anything that we could uh, <clears throat> push forward with on that time. I think we need to have a reclaim, honestly, of this section where the trend uh, shifted from bullish to bearish. I think we need to reclaim that first. So that's what I see on the short side. If we go to the four hour, um, this is where it kind of gets a little interesting because a lot of these four hour targets actually... Um, now we're getting a bullish reaction, but we're going to probably fluctuate about 1% to 2% before we actually get a real move, so I'm not too concerned about that. <clears throat> On here, we got uh, not quite a double bottom, but a lot of other coins having are having a double bottom on this. And so we can kind of look at that. Um, maybe we could probably briefly look at that a little bit, like Adam. Um, got a lower, much lower low than anticipated. A lot of these other ones do as well. Just gonna go down this list here. Um, Harmony is is kind of at the double bottom phase, and you got Dogecoin as well, which we'll cover here. Phantom is, which is a, a position that I'm currently in, uh, that wasn't in the academy. So, <clears throat> and then we got Ave as well, and so that's kind of the things that I'm looking at for that. And so structurally, this double bottom looks okay. Um, I think that's also the line in the sand where I would. Uh, if you wanted to wait for your short, I think a uh, break below this box would be a better way to do it, more of a safer way to do it. And then you could also use the top of the, op the opposite side of the range, which is at the top, as a way to actually short that. And so this is what that would look like if you did that. You could wait till you, you get to this point, uh, short from the top of the range there. It's a wider stop, and you, know, you only get about 4.7R versus 7 but it's also a little bit safer uh, to take advantage of. So that's kind of what I see. Um, this is kind of like the line in the sand as far as wanting to get a, a higher high, or a, a break bullish, a bullish break of the range. But overall, um, that's kind of just what I see for now. This needs to clear. Um, I mean, honestly, if you want kind of just a brief simplified version i would just play the break of this range and i mean i think we might get a bullish reaction going into tomorrow and again going into the cpi i think we could see a bullish reaction prior to the cpi and then see kind of a bearish reaction going into it and then we get another response out of it i see a lot of people talking about cpi like it's just a big thing look i've seen i've i've we've played this out so many times right like Short-term volatility, other than that, it's a non-event. Most of the time, it is a non-event. So just don't focus on it. Focus on what you see here. Right here, I see we are in a range based off of the past two days, past weekend, really. 
and we just play the range. It's as simple as that. So, all right, and then now we are going to go to Doge Coin, uh, one of the coins, the meme of meme coins, so to speak. Uh, on the weekly time frame, I've mentioned this um, in previous previous uh, videos. That so we had the pump. This is when Elon Musk took over. This is kind of the fade. And so far, we're having a lot of rejections. We had a we had a pump up, so pump up, fade, pump up, retest, fade, pump up, retest, fade. And so this is kind of a little disconcerting. Not quite the pump that I was looking for, but this is basically a very small version of this. And this is not really out of the ordinary for Dogecoin. It tends to uh, it tends to go up really rapidly, and that's the end of the move. So if you haven't been in Dogecoin for a long time, then it's pretty much just you're, you are going to miss the majority of it. That's just how it goes, right? And so, that being said, we have, so we had the, we had the bullish cross. This fade is represented, it's, it's represented by the bearish consolidation. And we had the bearish cross, but now we have a bullish wedge. So far, we have no reaction to that bearish wedge, but it's still early. I would, if I'm looking for a bullish move, I would want this to, first of all, basically just print a bullish candle. I think that's the first important thing. But second of all, kind of play this triangle. I think this is much easier to look at from the daily. Um, currently, we have a we have a daily short going on uh, for the uh, Apex script. Um, but so far, we've had no reaction. And this this is very interesting. This type of price action is not really ordinary, um, and probably a sign that we're going to get a major move soon. I would still think on the downside, because typically that's just continuation. Like right here, we have this and strike down this we had strike or uh a consult, uh sorry a chop and then strike up so but one thing i want to check here is that we do have a continuation we have a kind of a triangle going on here i think it's probably best that we just do it like this um, probably not the best continuation triangle but it is a valid one so i would just play the break of this i think most of the time your answers can just be met your 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 answers to your questions can be met by just playing the break of of a range triangle what have you so i think that's very important so um and we'll kind of zoom in this is kind of what we're seeing here on the four hour i think Again, this is just kind of solidifying that I think that we're going to go to the downside. And here's the thing: we could go, we could go all the way down to here, and that's still valid. So, um, this had the impulse down. We had the break. We had the retest of that break. We had a break below again, and now we have a retest again. So, I think this is still um, worth um, shorting. I um, that might be a little bit too tight of a stop. I'd probably just target the retest of that and then target down here. 1.9 is not the kind of reward, not, not the kind of R that I want. So I will not be short in here, but I think that's, if you needed to make a play right now, that's probably the only way I can think of it. Um, another option would actually be wait to the break of this and then maybe target the mid or target this previous here. And you actually would get a better R value that way too. So uh, in that case, the safest route is actually the best in terms of reward. Um, and in terms of flexibility, so um, so there's Dogecoin. All right. So that being said, um, this is the end of the video. I hope you like what you see. Let me know, um, and you know if you um, yes, yeah, just, uh, just let me know what how you feel about this. Give me comments, questions, um, whatever. I'm open for feedback. So um, that being said. Uh, see you next time.